Hello everyone, we're going to look at the drum editor in Cubase. Now, the drum editor, I think out of all of the DAWs I've used, the drum editor is the most powerful one, certainly that I, or the most efficient one I feel inside all of the DAWs for um, editing drum information, certainly MIDI drum information. Even in Cubase, there's different ways of editing MIDI drum information, which we will look at. But the reason I wanted to look at this is because it's my go-to. It's the one that I always, if I'm editing drums 95% of the time, I'm going to do it in the drum editor in Cubase. Now, I've got a completely blank, blank project here in Cubase. If you wanted to use the past project that we made when we looked at um, the piano roll or the key editor in Cubase, by all means do that. So I've got a completely blank Cubase project. The first thing we have to do is load a drum instrument. Otherwise, when we go to the drum editor, we're not going to hear any sound. We want to audition it against sound. So, like everything in Cubase, there's a few ways of doing it. We're going to right click, add an instrument track is one way in this left area. We've got the little plus sign. We can add instrument. We've also got the shortcut, remember, which can be quite useful, which is F11. So F11 you can add an instrument track, or as many people are using now as Cubase has developed this zonal idea of left and right and bottom zones, you've got the right zone and you can search your instruments up in here and there he is, we can put him in. So let's do it that way. So we're going to go to the right zone, I'm going to left click, drag it over and then let go. Now. If you haven't got the right zone, so you're in, I think the right zone came in to, into play in about Cubase 8. So if you've got something um, before Cubase 8, use one of the other ways. So the right click, add instrument track, or the little plus sign, or F11 still works. Okay, so I've made us a drum instrument track. We know we've got Groove Agent here. I can actually change the name like we did in the key editor. So. I could call this drums. Now, what we don't have is anything to edit. Like when we looked at the piano roll before, we haven't got any information here to edit. So I'm going to use this locator along the top, the ruler. I'm going to highlight bar, starter bar one to the starter bar two, or the end of bar one. So just a one bar highlight. I'm going to double click in there. That's given us a blank canvas. So we have something to edit now. Now I could now go up to MIDI, open Drum Editor, and it will load my Drum Editor up. I could also double click on the information, but as you can see, it's just loaded my piano roll up. But there's a little shortcut in Cubase, which is, see where it says here, we're in, along the left hand side, we're in Groove, I'm um, sorry, Groove Agent. Can you see it says here, no drum map? Let's flick that to drum map. Now when I double click, we're in the drum editor. So that that is a really efficient way of speeding up your workflow. Now if you imagine you've got a composition where you've got say 20 tracks and three of them are drum and percussion tracks, if you just highlight on those ones that are drums and percussion tracks and put GM map, it's a way of getting us into the drum editor really quickly. Now. You can also set up a shortcut using the keypad. And remember, if you want to do that, I'm not going to do that today, but at some point we will. But remember, edit, and it's key commands. Now, if I wanted to find the drums, I just type in drum here under my key command and press find, and then go to drum editor. I can write the key I wanted. so whichever key you choose, just make sure it's not one that you use a lot already. And then press assign and OK, and it will come up here. And that's how you can make a shortcut. We looked at that before for editing MIDI instruments. So it, it, it's handy, definitely, definitely handy, worth doing. So once you know you've got a key you want to use to get too quickly to the drum editor, that's a good way of doing it. So it's edit key commands search the drum, go to drum editor, add it in, and then OK it, and you can make a shortcut. That's great. OK, so, so far, we've set up a drum instrument. We've got a drum area in which we 
we know we can edit the information. Well, we've even made a shortcut to make it to our drum editor. Now, I'm just going to go to this Edit Instrument button. And at the moment, in Groove Agent, we haven't got any sound. So we want when we go into the drum editor, we want to hear something so we can audition what we're doing. So I'm going to move up to this area up here, this blank area up here, and I'm going to click on there. And with Cubase Pro, you can see it's given us a lot of options. Now, if you're on Cubase Elements, it doesn't matter at all. You'll probably just have a few, just a few options up here, but it doesn't matter whichever you want to click on for today. So I'm going to click on Studio Kit. It's under Drums and Percussion. And these are my options. These are all the drum presets we've got. But I'm going to, it's on something called Deep Into the Ground. So I'm just going to click on it. Now, Groove Agent. I'm, we'll look at this in much more detail because it is a it's a really cool drum editor and actually you can use it for slicing vocal loops and all sorts of things. But for today, we're just going to look at it in its basic form. So it's loaded as a preset up. You've got some things if you want to mess around with the microphones and stuff on the front page. But also, on each one of these, it tells you the MIDI note and we can right click and we can also rename this pad and also set the color. I find that quite useful sometimes, certainly if you've made your own drum samples, which I'll show you how we can get it into Groove Agent. But have color coordinating the pads can be, it just makes it look nice as well. Okay, so now we know we have an instrument loaded, we've got a blank edit area to edit, we've set it between just a one bar from the start of bar one to the end of bar one. We've made it a drum map, so I can double click on here. Now when I double click, click sorry, um, here's my drum editor. So if I expand this out, click in, automatically with me at the moment, my drumstick has appeared. If that doesn't, you can right click and go to drumstick. You've also got it at the top there in the toolbar, or I think it's zero on your keypad, it is and that will bring up the drumstick as well. So one to go back to the object selection and zero for the drumstick. That's another quick little workaround. Now, all of these are the same as when we looked in the previous video, when we looked at the um, piano roll. So you've got your solo, all of these things are identical. This is slightly different that we're gonna look at our options here. So along the left-hand side, these are all of the um, in a general MIDI drum kit, these are what we get. Each one of these keys on the keyboard, or when we click on this left-hand side, we can audition as well. So when we play A1 on a keyboard, we're getting a low tom. The majority of these time of the time, these will make sense with what they're saying. Sometimes a GM drum, drum map might be different to what you're working in, but that's why the audition tool there along the left-hand side is so useful. So say, I wanted to create a kick drum first. If I go along here, I've got this set to grid. I'm going to go to one eighths. Now, can you see once I've gone to eight notes or these are what we call quavers, can you see it split it into eight segments? So that means now I can make any one of these a kick drum. And now because I'm working eights, I can keep left click down and just drag across. Now, if I want to delete these these drums now, once you've made it, you just left click on it again and it will delete. Okay, so I'm gonna go for, we'll make a really simple beat. So I've got it on loop, I'll take click off. So press C to take the click off. Not the most exciting drum beat in the world. Okay, now I'm going to go to my closed hi-hats. I'm going to put those on the off beats. Okay, so we've got, we've got some sort of groove going. Maybe we'll go, we'll put it on the and as well, the kick drum. And how about if we go really wild, we're going to go to 16th notes. We could even put a kick just before the and of four, or the and of three, sorry after the end of the three. Now, 
what can be quite cool with this, we've made a sort of an idea. Can you see, same as our key editor, we can come down to the bottom here and we can change the velocity so that's exactly the same as when we were using MIDI to make um, melodic sounds in the video before. Because if you imagine a drummer, they're never going to hit exactly the kit all at the same time. They put a, they really humanise it by doing that. So even hi hats, you imagine hi hat, you can add that in. So we can highlight the hi the hi hats, and we can change them. There's also a way we can put a groove to this using the quantize. But I'm going to save that for another video. If you wanted to experiment just in the meantime with that. Do you remember the snap tool? Because at the moment I've got snap on, and remember J is the shortcut for that. At the moment I've got it set to 16th notes, and it'll only jump to every 16. But if I take snap off by pressing J, you can actually move these around slightly. Because again, when a drummer plays, they don't exactly, they won't be robotic on directly on that grid all the time. So that's worth experimenting with. But Cubase will actually create a groove for you, which we'll look at. OK, so we've got something. We've got a drum idea. What the other thing you might want to think about is perhaps with maybe the snare drum, if we went to 32, so now we've split into 32 sections, we could put this in. This is going to sound really odd. But until we bring these the velocity right down, and then this is what we call, I think it's ghost notes or in a drummer, where you see them when they're grooving along. They just really delicately hit that, that skin. So it, it kind of adds to the groove, but it's not up there on the velocity level, so it's really apparent. So it's worth experimenting with those and bring them down. And as you can see, same as the key editor, when we move the velocity down, it changes the color of the actual hit note here, which is cool. And when I write them in, at the moment, the velocity is set to 100. If you wanted to turn up the velocity to between anywhere between 0 and 107, 127, sorry, um, by all means, change it there. But I like to work to 100, and then it gives me a bit of headroom for moving up, these up and down. OK, and remember, if you can't see that, the, the velocity, you right click, and it's, a, it's in there somewhere. Insert velocity, there it is. OK, so we've created a groove using the drum editor. Say you've, you're happy, you've, you've, you've composed your song and you've got everything in here that you're happy with. You can actually, there's a couple of things. If you're using Groove Agent, you can, you can do Show Sounds here um, by instrument. And this will take away any sounds that aren't being used by the VST instrument. But the one I like as well is the show drum sounds with events. Now, can you see now, because I've only used these three, these three drums, that's all I've got to edit with now. So that's why I, I kind of leave that towards the end, because I might want to, say, a crash. Now if I do that, can you see now we've got four. So it's a way of tidying it up, certainly towards the end of a project and you want to get to things quickly, because you might listen through your project and think, I won't mind a ride in there, then you can add it in, and then at the end, just for the last bit of editing and stuff, you can do that. But as I say, if you're using an instrument like um, Groove Agent SE, you can do use sounds by instrument as well, and that can help tidy things. It saves scrolling up, scrolling up and down. But the most co one thing that drum editors do is put probably the most common instruments or hits that you'll use towards the top, so bass and snare and so forth. So they are generally, so you you shouldn't have to do too much scrolling down anyway. OK, so we know how to use the drum editor. We've created a beat. It's exactly the same as if we were using um, the piano roll or key editor in Cubase. If you wanted to then copy that across, is Control D once you've highlighted it. And the reason you can do that now, if I set my locator so that would loop, you might find that on bar two, 
and four, you wanted to emphasize some of the other drums more, so you can then go to bar two and perhaps bring up the velocity of the kick or perhaps those ghost notes or add a crash in or something like that. So it's a way that you can actually make variation. Um, the only other thing I wanted to say, which I forgot to say, when we're in the drum editor, whatever we click on will affect the velocity. The velocity will come up. So if we click on the kick drum, can you see these are our velocity changes? If I click on the hi-hats, these are the velocity changes I've made with that. And remember that snap function is quite useful, the J to take snap off if you want to move it slightly and back on if you want it to snap to the grid. And that's the same no matter what editor you're in. Okay, well I hope that helps.